This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. The views expressed by guests on this program do not necessarily represent the views of the host or owners of the Doggy Diva Show and do not necessarily constitute endorsement of products. Medical information discussed by guests on this program are those of the guests and is only for informational purposes and should not replace medical advice by your local veterinarian professional. Hi, this is Susan Marie from the Doggy Diva Show. This week, congratulations to the winners of this year's St. Patrick's Day Costume Contest, all dressed in their holiday best. Then, how dogs play a part in a new work environment. And a foster dog transitions to a cover dog. Then, going from wild child to a well-behaved dog. That's what's on our show this week. Let's get to it. Hey, did you hear that? What is that? It's the bark heard round the world. The Doggy Diva Show. Here's Susan Marie. Hi, welcome to the Doggy Diva Show, the show for animal lovers. I'm your host, Susan Marie, and as always, I'm joined by my canine co-hosts, the doggy divas themselves, Francesca, Coco, and our newest little diva, Miss Olive. Miss Olive is the cute little Italian greyhound rescue in the picture with the microphone. Thank you for joining us today as we bring the experts in the pet and animal world right to you. So go grab a cup of coffee and your pet's favorite treat, and we'll be back in just a moment. When Helen Brown ran away to New York City five years ago, she had no idea that a homeless cat with a punk rock haircut and enough catitude to light up the Empire State Building would be the one to teach her the true meaning of love and a forever home. In the tradition of her internationally best-selling memoir, Cleo, Helen Brown's Bono, The Amazing Story of a Rescue Cat Who Inspired a Community, is a heartwarming true story about a woman without an anchor a homeless cat without much hope, and finding a forever home in the city that never sleeps. Modern Cat Magazine calls Bono an uplifting tale about how everyone deserves love and a second chance. Bono by Helen Brown is on sale now everywhere. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. are here at St. Patrick's Day Festival and we have our winners of the costume contest and Monica thank you so much you'll tell us a little bit about this after the winners we're going to introduce all the winners and what their pets won but Monica I'm going to turn it over to you Thank you. So we're here at our 10th annual St. Patrick's Day Pet Fair. We had a wonderful fashion show. Some of these costumes are amazing. Custom made, our best in show we're about to introduce you to. If you guys should see this little guy, he is literally a adorable little leprechaun. He has got a custom leprechaun outfit on with a huge cape. And we're going to introduce you to Lisa. She is the owner of True and Faithful Pet Rescue, which Leonard is the best in show. Congratulations, Lisa. Thank you so much. Tell us about Leonard and how you got him. Leonard was uh, dumped by his uh, owners um, at the age of 14 years old. I've had him for three years now and he's 17 years old. And I do these contests for his bucket list. He certainly has a big bucket list to fill, and we were so glad that he, you know, accomplished one of his goals because he is the cutest little handsomest guy I have seen, and the costume is amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks so much. And next, we're going to go to our best trick. This is number 11, which is. This is BB, and BB is this cute little poodle. She just did the cutest little circle trick for a treat. So we're going to introduce you guys to her owner, and this is BB. Hi, I'm Gail, and uh, I think BB rescued me 12 years ago. She um, had a rough start in life, but now she's truly a diva. She lives a life of luxury, and she loves to do tricks. Well, she is adorable, and everything going on, there's a ton going on, and she was still... 
showing us what a diva she was and she was on it so she did a great job and it was very well deserved thank you so much and next we have well my daughter Haley come on over Haley Olive Olive is our pug and Olive won for most creative first place Haley tell us a little bit about Olive um, her name is Olive the Super Pug, and she won the most. She won most first place, most creative um, here, and she was here with her boyfriend, the Beast, having fun. <laughs> yeah, she was dressed up like Beauty and the Beast. Thank you. And then we also had we had a ton of really cute St. Patrick's Day dogs. A lot, a lot. Um, our second place most creative was Alibi. Alibi was a pug as well. Come on over, Alibi. Tell us a little bit about Alibi. Well, Alibi is about a year and a half. She's trained in ability, uh, agility, obedience, strict training, and she just loves everybody. Perfect. And if you guys could see her, she is adorable. This is Alibi. Tell a little bit about yourself as well. Well, I'm Sue Young. I'm the owner of the Critter Cottage. We have a dog park, private dog park, when that's why Alibi knows the agility. So we have a lot of fun visiting the vets around town. And oh, that is so great. And Alibi has this, he's just up like a flower. It's adorable. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> and then we also have some of our groups over here. We had our second place for our best duos and groups, and this is Foxy, Charlie, and Biscuit. Go ahead and tell us about these guys. Well, um, Charlie and Biscuit, Charlie and Biscuit are both rescues out of Key West, Florida, and uh, Charlie will be 13 years old in May. Oh. My name is Donna Fluharty, and this is my sister Darlene Samuel. I've got Biscuit. Donna has Charlie, and I'm fostering this little girl right here, Foxy. She's going up for adoption. I'm a new fox, uh, new foster mom. Uh, she was surrendered recently to a shelter, and so we're with a rescue. So Foxy, we brought out today. As far as I know, this might be her first outing of this kind, and she's done very well today. Oh, they are so great, and they are a great little group. And very sweet, Foxy is. So biscuit is. Um, she has congestive heart failure, so she's not well at all um but she still likes to participate in things so she just can't walk around very much she gets tired out <laughs> and then i'm also here with our best rescue betty boop and also with betty boop is pierre and pierre won second place for our best saint patrick's day can you tell us a little bit about betty boop and pierre and what is your name my name is chris through True and Faithful. Well, actually, both they both came from True and Faithful. Betty is a backyard breeder. She came from Miami. She's 12 years old, totally blind, and partially deaf. Pierre was a Missouri puppy mill rescue. He's four, and he runs the house now. He's the little ruler. Oh, that is so great. Now, I'm also here with our best St. Patrick's Day diva, first place and our best St. Patrick's Day dude, Dharma and Sir Thomas. This is Tammy. Tammy, tell us a little bit about Dharma and Sir Thomas. Hi, Monica. Dharma is a seven-year, eight-year-old Tibetan Spaniel who was supposed to be on her way to New York, but she stopped off at True and Faithful for a potty break and she came out of the van and like, what do you mean she's been at the other rescue for a year? Uh, I can get her adopted in no time. Well, two, three weeks later, guess who adopted her? <laughs> and as far as Sir Thomas, Sir Thomas was uh, also a rescue that I foster from True and Faithful Pet Rescue Mission. And I'm going, why can't he get adopted? And I fostered him and went to all kinds of vets. And he, you know, was going to all kinds of events, and everybody wanted to adopt him. And as soon as I told the people that, well, he's epileptic, and he's going to have to be on medication for the rest of his life, and the answer was, oh, well, I'm sure somebody will adopt him. Well, guess who? And he, he also passed away on the table getting neutered, and he, they brought him back to life. So he's got a lot of medical problems, but I don't care. I love him. Thank you so much. As you guys can see, we had a ton of really, really, really great portraits here. You know, these pets' costumes were amazing, and everybody had such a great turnout. 
Thank you, Monica, and thank you to everybody who came out. It was a big success. We had a lot of people at the event itself, and the event is actually still going on, so I'm going to let you go back to what you're doing, and it all goes to a good cause. Can we let everyone know about that? Yes. So um, I know we've talked about it before, but the owner of Shamrock Preschool, where my daughter used to go to school, Deborah, who's here as well, um, Deborah and I got together and started talking, and we started a fund for the office called Chip In, which is an acronym for Children Helping Injured Pets in Need. And the fund hosts funds for pets that need emergency treatment. So if, let's say, for example, a dog was hit by a car and the owner could not afford to take care of that pet financially to get them back home. So the owners would, you know, have to elect euthanization if they couldn't afford to treat. So the fund chips in, pays for the treatment and gets that pet back home safely with their family. And the chip in fund this year is actually going to donate the funds raised today to some of the medically needy pets of True and Faithful, which is here today. They have some really medically needy cases that they have not gotten fosters or sponsorships for these dogs. And these dogs need a lot of care so they can find their forever home. So a lot of the proceeds today are going to go to those dogs. Some of them need an eye removed. Some of them need, I mean, it's some major stuff. So we want to make sure that these dogs get a forever home. Well, thank you. And thank you, everyone. And Monica, as always, it's great to have you on and for the great work that you're doing, too. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great week. Coming up, how dogs add a welcoming touch to modern business. Stay with us. Listeners, I'd love to introduce you to PetPlate.com. They deliver freshly cooked human-grade dog food right to your door. I'm talking about dog food that is so high quality that even us humans could technically eat it. I've been feeding PetPlate to my pup for the last two weeks, and it's perfect for my picky pup and perfect for me since I'm so busy. So if you want something super healthy, really tasty, and ready to serve, go to PetPlate.com forward slash spot to get 30% off your first box. Once again, that's PetPlate.com forward slash spot to get 30% off your first box. P-E-T-P-L-A-T-E dot com. Let's Talk Pets. Let's Talk Pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com Welcome back everyone to the Doggy Diva Show. A forward-thinking workplace, pet-friendly workplace. This is a place where employees, clients, and visitors at this wonderful marketing agency in Indianapolis, often arrive to wagging tails, cute wet noses pressed against the glass, and on any given day, you will find at least one pup in the office of Valve and Meter Performance Marketing Home Office. From tiny Yorkies to large labs, many of them, the rescues, and they can be found by an employee's desk or maybe even at a department meeting. This is my kind of company. And the director of public relations states that they see the way dogs change the workplace and want to share this with others on how beneficial it could be to other companies considering this workplace benefit. And we are so happy to have with us today Thanos Genos, the director of public relations at Valve Meter Performance Marketing. Hey, Thanos, how are you? Hey, good morning. I'm doing great. Thanks for having us on. Oh, it's our pleasure. Can you please tell the listeners a little bit about yourself and what you do at Falvometer? Yeah, so uh, as you mentioned, I'm the Director of Public Relations, and my job is to be the storyteller. Uh, We are charged with telling the story of not only our clients, but ourselves, and having the opportunity to share a story that could brighten somebody's day or encourage them to rescue a dog or any other animal is what we really want to do. And having that opportunity here to share just the amazing benefits uh, that having our dogs, like my dog, Jameson, uh, in the workplace, it's just, it's unbelievable. It's one of the best benefits that you could ever ask for in the workplace, and we're happy to share that message. Now, you mentioned your little dog, Jameson, and he's a little Yorkie? He is. He's uh, He was the runt of the litter, and he's actually a rescue himself. So he's, uh, he's an awesome dog, and I, I will say... He rescued me 
probably a little bit more than I rescued. Oh, I love that. That's how it always goes. I have a, in fact, I bring my uh, dogs to work with me in the studio all the time. We have my little Miss Olive. She's kind of the, uh, the face of the show, the brand of the show, and she's with me all the time, and she rescued me. I'll tell you that right now. Can you tell us about any of the other pets who come to work? Yeah, so we've got some of our regulars uh, that we call them. Uh, we've got a couple of labs. We've got Sunshine. She's a yellow lab. Uh, she is probably one of the most energetic. She literally has a smile on her face when she's walking around the office both poking her head into every single office to say, hey, I'm here, pet me. And it's no matter what you're doing, you could be in a high-stress uh, moment trying to get uh, a deadline met. And when you see her kind of come up to you, it just makes kind of all that stress just melt away. And you just pet her for a minute, she lays on her belly, and you, you can't go wrong. And, you know, she's an amazing dog. Uh, we've also got a couple of uh, Shih Tzus with uh, one of our other clients. Uh, favorites when they come in. They run around with their little sweaters on and they get up on your lap. And it's just, it's, it's an amazing opportunity to sit there with the dogs and just kind of, you know, take a moment to, to refocus and, and get your head right when you're, when you're in a high stressful performance marketing uh, situation. You know, and it's really interesting that you say that because there are different, there's companies that are coming forward making their businesses pet friendly and they find that their people are more productive. The energy level is higher because there's so much, you know, stress when you're in a workplace and they're, they kind of like bring that down the, when you bring your dogs in, it kind of brings that down and you, it increases your productivity. And I have to ask, what was the inspiration that your company decided to go to, to start doing this? So a little over a year ago is when we uh, created our company and we split off of another company. And, and one of our employees asked our, our now owner, Marsha Barnes, uh, is there any way that we could have a dog day at work? At, you know, with our new office, you know, and, uh, it'd be really cool to just bring all of our dogs in. And she sat there thinking about it, and she was like, you know what, let's just look for a building that we can talk to the owners and say, hey, can we put it in our lease that we can have dogs in our office every day? I love it. Because she, she knows the benefits mm -hmm. of it. She knows that we're a high-performance, high, high fast-paced team. And, you know, she actually was not even a dog person to begin with. Um, it wasn't until she rescued an elderly dog that she saw all the benefits and fell in love with dogs. So she knew at that point when she was approached by one of our employees that it just had to be part of what we did going forward because culture is such an important part of, of keeping the right people in the office uh, and, and as well keeping people happy. So that's kind of the backstory of how we got where we're at today. Well, and that's such an inspiring story. And your CEO, you know, she's an awesome woman and very respected in uh, in the business. And to have her even look for a building that would that that would take that in with the dogs. And I would think myself um, that that would decrease turnover, especially if you're coming to work with your pet every day, and you know, you set up your routine. There, you know, you, you could take them wherever in your your, your workplace, that also helps to decrease turnover, which helps in a company to build that stability and that energy, which your company obviously has because it's grown uh, so much with, uh, especially in marketing where that creative, you know, you need that creative piece there. So you got a little, all you have all those little muses running around. Exactly. It's, uh, I will say this, you know, having a dog friendly workplace, uh, is one of our efforts that we continue to develop, you know, and, and it can be challenging. You know, it's one of those things that we have to have a schedule. We have to kind of say, okay, who's bringing the dogs in this week? <laughs> and because we've got big dogs, small dogs, uh, we want to, we want to make sure that all the employees safety and health is in the forefront. So we definitely take care of that and make sure that everybody's uh, happy. They can bring their dogs in. And, and I will say this, Marsha Barnes, our CEO, you know, if she hasn't seen one of our dogs in the office lately, she'll, she'll come up and poke her head into our cubicle or our office space and say, hey, I haven't seen Jameson in the office for a while. You should bring him in soon. And I it, love that. It's really cool to have that human aspect, you yeah. know, where, where everybody in the office, they see you as a whole person. It's not just the employee. It's who, what's important to you. And they know your dog's name. 
well, that matters so much. I mean, um, it, and we're talking about, you know, the, the pet aspect of it, which is so important, which I think brings so much to um, the workplace and brings so much to the people who work. So, you know, it kind of like has that nice energy level. But we haven't said exactly what it is that Valve and Meter Performance Marketing does because there's a lot that you do that would – that these stresses probably with the dogs there, it kind of helps us. So can you tell the listeners about the company itself? Yeah, so we are a marketing company that, if you were to say in one word, our focus is strategy. Our goal is to find the right strategies for companies and take that to a high-performance uh, execution standpoint where our goal is to help grow other companies uh, at the pace that they need to grow at. And at times... Some of those companies are growing very fast. So many of our, our uh, employees are very heads down, very focused, very detail oriented, very results oriented. And, you know, that's the goal. Our goal is to partner with companies who, again, have very similar core values. You know, our core values are love, serve, transform, and be just. And, you know, that, that transform is a huge part of what we do in the workplace to where we find companies who may be in need, who may need kind of that leadership. And part of that is having a company ourselves who, in the end, we, we can identify with somebody who, who it, who's in line with us. You know, we, we have to make sure we're good for them and they're good for us. And I think having that honesty with those companies is, is a big part of what we're looking to do and, and what we love doing. And in the end, we're, we're not the same marketing agency as every other company. Uh, we're out to kind of redeem the word marketing uh, in the eyes of business owners all throughout the nation. So in, in a nutshell, that's that's what we do, and we, we absolutely love what we do. So you love what you do, and your company is very successful, and there's um, – if if you love coming to work, if what you're doing is something that you love to do, your clients feel that. I mean, they, they pick up on that um, energy. And you can take Jameson in with you. Is, is, I love that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, a, a quick story. You know, I had Jameson in at the vet, and he had to have a couple of teeth pulled. And after he had his teeth pulled, they said, you know what, you might need to watch him for, for a couple hours. I said, oh, what? Well, you know what? That's not a problem. I'm going to take him into work, and he's actually going to sit in his bed right by my desk. But you can't get any better than that. It's, it's amazing. It is. That's so wonderful. Oh, to learn more about you, know, about you, about Valve and Meter Performance Marketing, where can they go? Uh, they can find us online at valveandmeter.com. Uh, everything's there they want to see. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook under Valve and Meter. Uh, and we're happy to uh, share our story and I uh, look forward to uh, sharing it with even more people. I'm so glad that you came on the show today. Thank you so much for being with us today. And I just want to thank thank you guys for what you're doing for animals and helping to change the way companies view pets in the workplace. I think your company is a success story and the fact that you have your pets there as part of your team, it, it says a lot. It's a great plan and I hope that people contact you, do business with you, and at the same time, observe all this. Definitely. Thank you so much for having us on. I appreciate all the time. You have a great week. Next, how a foster pup becomes a cover girl. Stay tuned. Hey, cat people. Litter box smells always on your mind. Think about your cat, not the box, with World's Best Cat Litter, the litter that delivers big odor control in a tiny package. World's Best Cat Litter harnesses the concentrated power of corn to trap odors deep inside the litter. Ready to knock out smells and use less litter? Find World's Best Cat Litter at Target, Walmart, and in your local grocery and pet stores. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. back everyone to the doggy diva show our next guest is a successful new york photographer with his photographs appearing in the new york times the new york post star magazine and more he's also an author 
and his muse for his most recent book was a precious fostered French bulldog named Miss Vivienne, who in true diva style adored the camera and the camera adored her. The photos Bob took of her are immortalized in his book, Where's My Money, which is available on Amazon. And today we want to welcome Bob Johnson. Hey, Bob, welcome. Well, hello. Thanks for having me. And, oh, and Miss Vivienne, your and stories Vivienne. about Miss Vivienne. Yes. So Miss Vivienne was such a sweetheart. I mean, all those photos of her in there. She's so adorable, and she's a cute little Frenchie. Um, I love the book, but I'm sure the listeners may be wondering why is the title "Where's My Money"? But maybe if they look at the cover, they'll kind of understand it because of that little look. Uh, so they, maybe you could tell us where did the title "Where's My Money" come from? Well, I mean, I, I had dogs who would run from my camera, and finally, Miss Vivienne was just like ready, willing, and able. And so I started posting away to Facebook, and one friend commented it said, and said, "Why does it?" Always look like you owe her money. <laughs> she does have that look, and, by the way. Yes. So from there, every time she had that look and looked up at us, it was like, where's my money? And so <laughs> where's my money? It was just photos, photos, photos. And it's just, it just after going through all the photos, I was like, I have to put this in a book because it's just too funny. And isn't it such a cute, it's really uplifting. And, and I love the fact that she's a foster pup. I mean, you know, that in itself is wonderful, but she's an extremely photogenic. I mean, she went from foster pup to cover girl. I mean, God bless her. She is, she's beautiful and um, very photogenic. And, and definitely a diva. Oh, she's a diva from the word go. You could tell right by the the cover. And in one of the pictures, she does give like a great big smile. She's like, um, that's the one, actually, it's the one when she got her money. But she has that big, beautiful smile on her face. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. And she looked, that, that What I did with that photo, that's the only one that's been like photoshopped, of course. But she, I had a photo of her in the car. She was hanging out the window <laughs> with this big smile on her face. That's the bliss. Like, she looks like she's uh, yes. blissful. Absolutely. She loves the car. Just loves riding in the car. And it's like, I got that photo. And it's, take that and just plunk it there. And there it is. Oh. So there's just a happy, happy, happy. But who wouldn't be happy with all that money? I know. I'm looking at her and she's like going, ka I made it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> now, th um, Vivian, Miss Vian, is a foster, but you've also fostered, you volunteered with uh, the New York Bully Crew, a non for profit that specializes in rescuing pit bulls. Can you um, tell us about your experience with them and how you donated your time with them? Yeah, well, we had rescued a dog from a, a local, the Riverhead Am Animal Shelter, an, an old. Oh, champ. He was 12 years old, 12-year-old pit bull. He was just the sweetest guy. Um, and while we were doing that, we met someone else who connected me to the New York Bully Crew, and they at the time didn't have any videos. I'm like, well, let's, let's just go volunteer and do some videos and take videos of these dogs because they need to get the videos out there to, so people can see them and adopt them. And And so we went and we videotaped a bunch of dogs, and there was one that we kind of fell for, even though Champ was still alive, but it wasn't long after that that Champ died. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, well, let's let's foster this one named Lips. <laughs> and so we fostered Lips, and we failed as foster parents. And she became ours, I think, for five years before she developed cancer. And that was, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was, it was, but she lived a great life the last five years of her life. Oh, I'll bet. <laughs> yeah. And so that's how I met the New York Bully Crew. I took some photos for them, some videos for them, and we fostered a dog um, unsuccessfully. Now, we're talking about I and all of my listeners know, you look up foster failure in the dictionary, my picture's there. Um, <laughs> and, and fostering a dog can be so tough, but foster parents are so needed in order to save lives. What would you say is worth, you know, the challenges of fostering a dog? Well, it depends. On, every, every dog is different. Every dog is different. I mean, it, it's even the dogs that we've had and the ones we've fostered and the ones we've we've we've, we've um, failed at fostering. It, I mean, Lips was a challenge of a dog, and she 
she just need, she actually needed a place to be where she could be away from dogs and other small creatures because she was very dog and animal aggressive. Um, we're fostering one now, and I believe we're going to be failed fosters here. And, and she's a dog from Puerto Rico. Her name is Roxy. She's afraid of everything. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people, when they go to when you go to a, a shelter to see dogs, you want a dog to come up to you and be friendly with you and be all happy. But she was afraid of us. But she was still incredibly sweet. So we just went back and visited and visited again and visited again and finally brought 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 her home. And I mean. Like I said, I think we're going to be failed fosters here. But if we weren't, I mean, it would give her a chance to get to know that people aren't bad and and people are nice to her and help bringing her out of a shell. Because she really, I mean, she was she was a type of dog. She she became friendly. She had a a dog boyfriend, I think. And wow. The boyfriend was adopted, and the family didn't want to take her with them because she was just. I mean, she she isn't aggressive. She's just afraid of everything and Mm. and just got to slowly work with her to, I mean, one day we hope she'll jump in her lap, but she really won't even let us pick her up. Wow. She's so lucky to have you because so many of those uh, pups with, um, from Puerto Rico and the Caribbean islands came over here. And I mean, literally all those lives were saved. So I commend you for taking Roxy because, you know, they'll probably need a little bit more love and tenderness to build up their uh, courage and she probably bonded with that little dog that's probably because they were together for a while i bet you that that her little boyfriend she bonded so she she's getting over her little broken heart well yeah she we felt she was a bit sad and depressed and and thought about you know maybe puppy paxel may not be a bad idea yeah but but we're waiting to see it's like see if because I've heard stories of other people with dogs who are very shy and, and fearful who slowly start coming around. It takes a couple months before they start really showing who they are and up to a year to get into like kind of real full, full friendly dog. For someone who would be interested in rescuing a dog uh, from Puerto Rico or, you know, some other way, how, how do you think they could do it? You know, I always recommend Google. It's it's the best place to go. I mean, whether you want to rescue a, a French bulldog, there's a French bulldog rescue network, and there's one dog who's especially um, something who's up there who's looking for a home right now. Her name is Suki. If you get a chance, Google Suki. it. Um, but Google, you know, Puerto Rican rescue dogs, and you'll find what shelters in your area may have brought them in. I mean, because there was a whole group of rescue dogs that the Southampton Animal Shelter took in. And in finding your local shelter and talking to them, they may be very helpful there. Well, thank and that's great advice. And I'm sure that there's a lot of people out there who would love to take um, these dogs in. And, and they do. They need that. All dogs that are in shelters and rescues obviously are looking for their forever homes. Um, but I think that some of them that came in that the group from the hurricane just are a little bit more challenged and they need that, that little extra snug of love just to get them, yeah. yeah, get them over that hump. Now, going back to this beautiful diva, Ms. Vivian, tell us about where the listeners can go to learn more about you, learn more about um, Where's My Money with, with Ms. Vivian. And also, I just want everyone to know that you are, you're fostering Roxy. Yes. Is there any potential of Roxy um, getting her own book? Well, yeah. We're still trying to find her, her voice and her personality. And she, the photos I've been taking of her tend to look more old school Hollywood glamour. <laughs> It's, it's very, you know, oh, very Veronica Lake, yes. <laughs> so we're we're trying to figure out what the story is going to be, um, and that will come to us, I'm sure, as as she slowly reveals her personality. Oh, I um, love that. So we're we're I, I, she's very photogenic, and she's just. So, and, and she's not afraid of the camera. Well, she's afraid of everything, but she doesn't run away. Well, that's <laughs> cute, though, because I did see her picture, and she is. She's quite a looker, so I think that she needs her day in the, you know, to be out there so that people could buy her book, too. But Exactly. For anyone she who wants to fail. learn more about you, Roxy, Miss Vivian, well, where can they go? Well, if, if, to get the book. Um, all you need to do is go to where'smymoney.info, and it will take you right to the Amazon page. 
just wheresmymoney.info. And to learn more about me, go to bittenbyazebra.com. And you can learn all about the stuff I do. And if, if you want to hire me, there's a contact button right there. And I'm, I'm happy to shoot your dog. I love well, that. I mean, to photo the dog. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I yes, photo no, I don't, shoot I, of the dog. <laughs> It depends on what kind of dog they are. Um, <laughs> <laughs> As a, but you did such beautiful. I gotta tell you, you did such beautiful work. Um, the the one where's my money? Love it. And any and anyone I've showed this to, they like they love it. I mean, all the little sayings that go with it. It's very cute. So um, as long as they smile, that's that's my goal. Yeah. So I can't wait to see. You'll have to come back on the show when you do Roxy's. Yes. I, I yes. We we will work on that, and that will probably be, I guess, in the next. Sometime within the next year. I love it. Well, Bob, thank you so much for being our guest today and for sharing all the the special benefits of saving lives through fostering pets and through your beautiful photography. It's what you're doing is a great thing. So I thank you so much for coming on and sharing all that with us today. Oh, thank you. The beautiful thing about fostering, if there are people out there who are interested in fostering, it doesn't require, I mean, you don't have to be a failed foster. You can foster a dog for a month or two months or a couple weeks or even sometimes a weekend. So it's a chance to get an animal into your life as well, which is also rewarding. Perfect. And, you know, getting those animals out of the shelter always makes room for um, them to bring another animal into the shelter so another homeless pet has a chance. So you're by fostering, you're actually saving lives. Well, and getting them out of the shelter, my God, I wouldn't want to live in a shelter. No, I, mean, I know. Some are nice, but a home is always better. That's what it is, the forever home or even a foster home working their way to the forever home. It's the goal. Exactly. I thank you, and uh, I hope to have you on again with your next book. I'll enjoy it. Well, I look forward to it. Okay, thanks a lot, Bob. Very take, take care. Hi, Doggy Diva Show listeners. Susan Marie here to take just a half a minute to let you know how much we appreciate your being with us every week to hear great dog tips you can use with your pet, some great stories about rescues, fostering, and some heartwarming stories about second chances for pets who are now in loving forever homes. Be sure to go to our website, thedoggydiva.com, to see pictures of Miss Olive and other dogs we talk about on the show and get to know us a little better. That's thedoggydiva.com, D-O-G-G-Y. We appreciate your feedback, too. Okay, let's get back to the show. Up next, taking your dog from a wild child to well-behaved. Stay tuned. Does your dog itch, scratch, stink, or shed like crazy? Come to Dynavite for help. Order a 90-day supply of Dynavite. Everything we tried failed except the Dynavite. Pick up two bottles of Super Mega Fish Oil. Get the third bottle free. Packed with omega-3, DHA, and EPA fatty acids. Super Mega is great for your dog's immune system, healthy skin, and soft, shiny fur. Dogs love it. Try Super Omega Fish Oil. Buy two. Get one free. At Dynavite.com. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Begging to hear more of your favorite show? <laughs> Full episodes of all our shows are available on demand. Go to PetLifeRadio.com to fetch our entire lineup of possum pet podcasts. Also, dig us up in iHeartRadio and iTunes. Let's talk pets. <laughs> Live and on demand only from Pet Life Radio. back everyone to the doggy diva show training our dogs is so important but sometimes it can be a little challenging i am a victim of that but we have found a great book train your dog now and it's written by veterinarian dr jennifer summerfield it's available on amazon and i have to tell you It has all of the basics. It's like one of those instant training handbooks. It's got basic commands, behavior fixes. It was great. It's easy to go through. And I am so happy to have the author with me, Dr. Jennifer Summerfield. Welcome to the Doggy Diva Show. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. We're excited to have you. I loved your book. Now, for the (laughs) listeners who may want to learn a little bit more about you, can you tell us a little about yourself? Definitely. So I am a uh, full-time practicing veterinarian. I work at a practice that's just outside Huntington, West Virginia. And uh, our practice does a little bit of everything. It's a general practice. Um, 
So I do a lot of different things as part of my day job, but what I have always been most interested in as far as veterinary medicine um, is behavior. So that's really kind of where my passion is. And I do work quite a bit with uh, behavior cases at our clinic, so dogs that have serious behavior problems like aggression and anxiety issues and um, you know things like that. We see quite a few cases through our practice, but we also get referrals from neighboring practices pretty frequently because there really isn't anybody else in the area who does much with behavior as far as veterinarians go. And I, uh, I also have a background in dog sports with my own dog. So I've been doing competition agility and obedience with my own dog since I was about 16. So I have a, a pretty good background there as well. And I've taught uh, currently at our practice, I'm teaching mostly agility classes, but I have taught at various times um, our puppy kindergarten classes, basic manners classes, classes in the, you know, canine good citizen stuff and competition obedience and kind of the works. <laughs> But a little that's, bit of everything. Yeah, but that's good because you have that whole well-rounded background. Now, you're talking about teaching agility. You have some dogs of your own. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, definitely. At the moment, I have three dogs, and they are all Shelties. Um, so that's a, that's a full house, lots of mm-hmm. hair, lots of barking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the oldest one will be 10 years old next month, actually. His name is Remy. And then my two younger dogs are three and four. Their names are Clint as in Clint Eastwood and Gatsby. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. And you also have a couple of cats, don't you? I do. I have two cats, Isabel and Bernadette, who are very helpfully supervising this interview from the couch beside me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. What was your inspiration for writing this book, uh, Train Your Dog Now? Yeah, actually, uh, the way it came about is I have a blog that I write for dog owners on um, various training topics and behavior topics, and I've been doing that about two years now, and it's always been very geared towards um, just average dog owners, you know, not necessarily people who have a whole lot of training background or who necessarily even have a ton of interest in, like, the nitty-gritty behavior science stuff. They just want, like, practical information about how, you know, how do I get my dog to do things that I want? Why does my dog do stuff that I don't like, you know? (laughs) And um, actually, one of the editors for the publisher I worked with got in touch with me through the blog site because they had an idea for um, this book that they were interested in doing, but they needed an author to work with to do it. And they felt like my writing style and the kind of approach that I took in the blog was kind of what they were looking for. So we talked about it, and it ended up being a collaborative project that we kind of jumped on and, and did together, which was really cool. But our whole idea for the book was we really wanted it to be a super practical, easy-to-use guide for people. I know there are a lot of training books on the market, obviously, but what we felt like was kind of lacking in a lot of cases was something that was really sort of easy for people to use, something that they could just grab and open up and say, okay, and, you know, just a couple of pages, give me the rundown on what can I do about this problem that my dog's having. And um, so that's kind of how we... We decided to structure the book, and it's got um, almost 100 separate topics in it (laughs) on various things, Um, you know, everything from basic training commands to, you know, how to get your dog to cooperate with you for grooming stuff to tricks to even um, more serious behavior stuff like what to do if your dog doesn't like visitors or what to do if your dogs are fighting with each other or things like that. And in it, you do get into like the basic commands and things, which is very helpful for people. And then you do the kind of like understanding the and addressing the behavior problems, which is very good. Right. And you're right. There are some books out there and some people are totally into the theory and the understanding. And, but there are some people who just want to, I love those books. (laughs) I do too. But then there's sometimes you just want a book that's going to say, okay, how do I just get my dog to sit? How do I get, what's the best way for me to get his nails done? How, what happens when I go to the groomer? So, and that's what your book is. It's kind of like, um, I had been a trainer in a prior life and we did something that I loved that everybody loved bite size training. Cause what it did is it gave you what yeah. you needed, but it was like in short increments and I loved it. Right. Um, and that's what your book's about. Can you tell uh, the listeners like what they can expect to find in your book? Because it's set up so easy because you like give steps within each, um, you break it down into steps for each thing that you're looking into. Exactly. Yeah, and that was really important to us when we were putting the book together, was we really wanted it to be um, really actionable things to do. So um, for each topic, 
basically, and the topic might be, you know, teaching your dog to sit or teaching your dog to come, or it might be pulling on leash or counter surfing or jumping on visitors or, you know, any, any topic you can think of pretty much is in there. Yeah. And for each topic, basically there's just um, a really short little introduction, just a couple sentences to kind of summarize like, Hey, what is this skill? Why might you want your dog to be able to do it? And then it just jumps right into step one, step two, step three. Um, each topic is a list of numbered steps on how to address that problem or how to teach your dog that skill. So meant to just very much cut to the chase and be super practical, like, here's what you do. Well, and it's, and as we talked about, it, you have, like, your basic thing, like, you know, sit, stay. You have some behavioral issues. And you even have, like I said, the grooming, the, the nails, and also how to administer medication. But just it seems to yeah. me that there's something that you cover everything in it, and it's done in such a simple, basic way. Like you said, you give the little prelude to whatever it is that you're going to be talking about, and then you break it down into simple steps for the, right. um, you know, the pet parent to follow. So I found that to be so refreshing. And also for someone who doesn't have a lot of time, because I have a house full of dogs, it works out perfect. Right. <laughs> and each dog has their own personality. So you could gear it towards right. whatever dog it is you're doing. And being in rescue and fostering, it's sometimes great just to have the simple basic steps just to train so that they can go on to the forever home. So this is you covered everything. Exactly. Yeah, no, I'm glad that uh, that you found that and that you did find it helpful in that way, because that's really what we were going for was for it to be something that people could just grab quickly and turn right to the page they need for the problem they want to address. And it just has everything laid out right there for what to do. Well, you did a great job. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I am that basic. <laughs> Basic average pet parent. So I this is this is great <laughs> for me. Now my sister on the other hand, she does agility. She does all her she has corgi. She has three corgis. Oh. And she does yeah, I have I have like my oh, little cool. Ishka Bibble, uh, the, my Ishka Bibble group here who they can <laughs> do all the basics and they can do a little bit more sometimes on command. But this, yeah. this, this gave me a little bit more to work with. So I was really happy to have that. Um, Good. So yeah, I really hope you find it helpful. Yeah. So where can the listeners go to learn more about you and also to learn more about Train Your Dog Now? Because I'm sure that after us talking about it, they're all going to say, okay, well, where can I get that? So where can the <laughs> listeners go? Definitely. So you can order the book through either Amazon or Barnes & Noble. I know it's available through both of those. Right now, the publisher is Simon & Schuster. Um, so it should be available through most of the major sort of mass market bookstores and things in general. But I know for sure that you can order it online through Amazon or Barnes & Noble um, right now. So as far as where you could learn more um, about me, if you wanted to, I do have the blog that I mentioned. It's called Dr. Jen's Dog Blog. And the website is just www.drjensdogblog.com. And so if you want to, you know, read any of my thoughts on all the topics that I have there, or there's also a little section with information about me and uh, some information about the book as well on that site. So your listeners could certainly visit me there if they're so inclined. Well, that's great. And I want to thank you, Jennifer, for being a guest on our show today. I love your book. And I want to thank you um, for all that you're doing for pets and for pet parents. So, <laughs> Well, great. Thank you so much for having me. It's been super fun. <laughs> Thanks. We'll be back in just Thanks. a moment. In closing, the Doggy Divas, Miss Olive, Francesca, and Coco wish everyone a safe and happy Easter. We would like to thank our guests this week. And also, as our doggy divas always say, please love your pets because they love you unconditionally. And please remember to adopt, foster, spay, neuter, and microchip. And as always, please have a great diva week, everyone. That's all for this episode of the Doggy Diva Show. To find out more, go to our website, thedoggydiva.com. Also, find us on our Facebook page, the Doggy Diva Show, and tell your fellow dog lovers about it. Don't miss Susan Marie, Miss Olive, and the Doggy Divas right here for the next episode. See you again soon. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.